Hey, good weekend to you. Welcome to Leading Edge. I'm Jerry Anderson. Good to have you along. And by the way, may I welcome you to April? Yeah, I think we have a rather April-esque show for you today. April means the return of mud hens. Go Tigers, go hens, go Indians. Uh, opening day at 5th, 3rd, this Tuesday, the 5th. Coming up, the Thanks. GM of the mud hens on my show. But first, spring has been a traditionally popular time to go house hunting. Maybe put yours on the market. I'm talking real estate. Biggest investment most of us make. An important a part of our economy that has just been on fire the past couple of years. But that is putting some people in a real bind. And yes, you can always rent, but man, have you checked rental prices recently? Our guy on real estate, John Mangus, joins me. He is the co-owner, principal broker of REMAX Preferred Associates right here in Toledo. And may I say, earlier this year, this year elected the new president of Ohio Realtors, the state's largest trade association. Congratulations, Mr. President. Thank you, Jerry. It's see, great to see with you. See what appearances on Leading Edge do for you? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All exactly. right, let's start here. It's been All a seller's right, market. Go. We know that. Uh, it's the seller's market, at least in part, because there are more prospective buyers out there than there are people looking to sell their homes. Houses for sale. I think in his business, it's called inventory. It's been in short supply. John Mangus, what's the situation now here in the spring of 2022? So, Jerry, I, I know how much you love Bowling Green. Yep. So before taping this, I went to the multiple listing service, and there are a whopping three houses on the market in Bowling Green, Ohio right now. Wow, that is amazing yeah. for it. And you're seeing the same thing in the greater Toledo, Northwest Ohio area. Correct. So, you know, our, our Northwest Ohio footprint is similar to WTOL's you know, yeah. footprint. You know, it, it, it is Northwest Ohio. Uh, we go down south of Findlay, you know, east over toward Port Clinton, you know, to the state line in Indiana. Right. So also when I checked in that whole footprint, Jerry, there were under 600 houses on the market. There were 596 houses on the market this morning. Okay, pre-pandemic. In a normal yes. year, if you can get us back to that, that 600 figure would have been more in the range. I'm not going to hold you to a specific right. pick, but about. So let's go back to, um, let's say, maybe 2015, 2016, 2017. Right. More of a balanced market. To, to your point, you know, we're in sort of a seller's market right now. Right. But during those years, it was more of a balanced market. And we would have three to 6,000 listings on the market at, a, at any time. We have been through two pandemic years, 20 and 21, and yet sales have skyrocketed. Can you yeah. make sense of that for me? Well, you know, I think one of the byproducts of the pandemic years has really been the emphasis on housing. You know, you look at it, what the pandemic has done and it's drove a lot of people to spend more time at home which has been uh, a really interesting piece. You know, some people have said, you know what, this place is too small. I'm now going to work from home um, on an extended basis. You know, we need a home with a den so I can close the door and be away from, you know, the pets and the kids yeah, and the right. noise yeah. or get out of the basement. You know, if they've been working out of the basement for a while, some people want to, you know, get into a place with a den and a window. So, yeah. you know, that's driven some change, Jerry. Uh, as I have said, soaring prices, I said this in the intro, put put some people in a real bind. And John, I'm thinking especially about those first-time buyers. Remember buying the first time, folks? You, yeah. you, you, you scramble and you claw to get that down payment. And then you get there. And then, of course, you borrow the rest of your, of, your, of your offer. It's called a mortgage. And in this market, John Mangus, the competition is fierce. You tell me from people who are just walking in with cash offers. What do you tell those first-time prospective buyers? Like, they got to be getting frustrated. Uh, you know, the, the frustration levels for first time buyers, um, I mean, it's just through the roof. And, and I will also say that frustration carries over to, you know, our industry and the practitioners as well. You know, it's so challenging to take buyers into to, you know, new listings when they hit the market. You know, it's kind of like the old stop, drop and roll yeah. fire yeah. Uh, drill thing. Well, that's kind of how the, the, the house market, uh, the housing market is right now, Jerry. When a new listing hits the market, you have to stop what you're doing and go see it immediately and write the best, strongest offer you can, knowing that you're probably going to be in a multiple offer situation. And if you're a first time buyer using you know, an FHA product and you're asking the seller for seller concessions yeah. to help get your loan through, yeah. uh, you're just so far behind the eight ball. They're, they're really 
just is not a great solution in that scenario. Do this piece for me, John, because aren't people offering, I'll offer you $212,000 for your house. And if it takes it, I'll offer you more. And they put in, yes. is that that escalator thing? Walk me escalation through that. clause. Yeah. Okay. What is that? It, it, you know, we're, we're seeing escalation clauses regularly. And, and the challenge with escalation clauses, you know, while they're well intended and they maybe do give, you know, a, a buyer an advantage that, you know, some of the other people who are writing on the same property don't have, what has happened is so many buyers are now using escalation clauses. So maybe you've got, you know, eight or 10 offers on the property yeah. with three or four escalation clauses. The difficulty then begins determining, you know, where that foundation is. In other words, you know, what do you base the number on to escalate from? Uh-huh. Oh, man. Are people still offering on homes without, in some cases, really seeing them on the inside, maybe without having them inspected? Because I think that sounds so very risky. How do you counsel those folks? So um, first piece of that, yes, people are writing offers sight unseen, uh, particularly during the coming soon phase of the marketing program. Right. That's sort of a pre-marketing program that our multiple listing service offers. And during the coming soon status in our multiple listing service, um, showings can't happen. So sometimes buyers will, will feel like there's an advantage in writing an offer sight unseen during the coming soon stage. Um, as you know, Jerry, you know, all offers must be presented to the seller. So yep. if an offer comes in, the listing agent is duty bound to present that offer. And if the offer checks the boxes for the seller, the seller may sign it and the buyer may be purchasing it sight unseen. Wow. And there yep. was never an open house. <laughs> no. Okay. okay. I got to no. take a break. Um, I want to talk about interest rates. That's a big, that's a big factor in real estate. You know that it affects yes. your, what your monthly payment is. Uh, we'll do that and much more. John Mangus, my guest from uh, REMAX Preferred Associates, the president of the Ohio <laughs> Realtors. That's good stuff. This is Leading Edge. We're back.